Hi and welcome back. This week I'll be doing a box that I like to call the cage. And you'll see why in a moment. We're going to start with eight popsicle sticks and I've trimmed four of them down to 75 millimeters and four down to 70 millimeters. This is fairly customizable. If you want to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you could do that. I'm sure you wouldn't have any problem adjusting your numbers to match. So I'm um, going to uh, set those aside for a moment and I'm going to talk about um, my toothpicks here. Now I'm, I'm just using basic round toothpicks with pointy ends and to cut them quickly I use a pair of nail clippers. Super super simple and I just clip off the end put your finger there so you don't get hit with the flying points and then I measure and I have 23 that are 46 millimeter I have 12 that are 35 millimeter and I have 4 that are roughly 30 to 32 millimeter let's say 31 millimeters but they may be off for the for the 12 and the 4 that's important you need to have these are going to go across and you'll see why when I get to that point these are important the 12 and the 4 and uh, the 23 are not as important what you need to know about the 23 don't mix up your sticks what you need to know about the 23 is that you want to have an odd number let's say you only feel like cutting 17 then only cut 17 if you want to go bigger if you want your cage bars closer together then you would do more but it's got to be an odd number and I'll show you how to do that in a moment and you see I have a notebook here and there's a reason for that what I'm gonna do is so I don't have to do a lot of measuring and figuring out where things go I'm just gonna use the pre-measured lines on this piece of paper I'm just going to use a little piece of scotch tape which I'm going to fold over you have double sided tape it would be much quicker but I don't all I have available is scotch tape so I'm just going to use some scotch tape line it up stick it down once you have those all taped down remember these are 70 millimeter these are 75 and uh, this is, line is unnecessary, but sometimes I get really into what I'm doing and I forget where the top and the bottom is. So this just helps me to remember where that is. One of your uh, walls, one of your walls will need to either have one less or one more than the other. Now, if you wanted to measure, you could measure. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to do it by sight. And now for the 70 millimeters, I'm going to keep those even because they're short and it just makes sense to keep those even. So I'm going to glue actually right right to the very edge of these and I'm just going to put dots on the top and for the bottom I'm going to put a little bit more. Now when it comes to these uh, toothpicks because they're delicate with the glue, I like to use a dot of glue. I don't like to smooth it out. I just like to do a dot. And when you lay this down, you're going to want to leave approximately one stick's worth of space at the bottom. Now I have all my bottom sticks down, as you can see. And you can see I used quite a bit of glue. Um, now because these corners here are actually going to act as corners for these as well when you put the second set down you're going to want to probably leave a good amount of space there and not start it flush and because I want six per side I'm only going to put four and spread them out and I'm going to toss down my extra one up here so that we have an odd number. 
Double check you have spaces. To be honest, you could actually just put your sticks down at the bottom first, but this is the way I like to do it. Now you're going to take your 35 millimeter sticks and we're going to put some glue down here. I'm going to try not to get any on the paper. And as you can see, again, I'm not being shy with the glue. You want to use your 35 millimeter stick, since these are 70 meters long, millimeters, sorry. We're going to line it up. There's some of that glue. And it's going to be flush on the bottom and flush on the edges. If it's a little off, don't worry. Almost every time I do these boxes, they're just slightly different. And we're going to do the same thing at the top with the 35 again. It's going to be all the way across. And I'm using a good amount of glue because I don't want this to fall apart while I'm decorating it with the yarn that I picked up. I'm going to do it straight across, flush even, flush even, and then for the top, top is a little bit more complicated. The top you need to leave a two stick margin on either side, which is why I decided to go with the 35 and a little bit over 30 millimeters. Now, I had a really hard time getting these cut properly every time, um, so there's going to be variations, and that's part of the reason why I do not give instructions on how to do the lid yet, because the lid of your project is probably going to change in size based on the placement of these sticks. But what we're going to do is we're going to take one that is 35 and one that is 31, going to glue them down. Now I'm just going to quickly lay that down. And your best bet in this scenario is to put them together and then try to center them and have them have the same amount of space on either side. Again, take one of each, and we're going to do it at the top. Um, you can see I'm not playing around with this glue. I want lots of glue in here. Don't mix up your sticks. One short, one long. I'm going to do it opposite up here. I'm going to put the longer one over here and the shorter one here. And I'm going to do my best to center it. I just want to let you know that um, all this white glue will go away. It will flatten and it may be a little bit shiny, but you're not going to see it. And what I would do before handling this is let it sit for at least 24 hours and then you can pick it up and, and mess with it. So here we have our four walls and they are dry and I can pick them up and I can handle them. Not a problem. Um, and then this is going to be your top and of course this is going to be your bottom. And it looks like we had a little bit of slipping there. I'm not going to worry about it. As I always say, it's not supposed to be perfect. Now, when I did this particular one, I did not use a lot of glue when I was putting down my sticks. So I went ahead and dumped tons of glue in the corners just to give it some strength. And as you can see, it is, it's dried a little bit shiny, but it is it did flatten itself, and it's not going to go anywhere. I'm confident I can pull on it, and it's not going to break. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put these together. So what I'm going to do is put some glue here, here, and I'm also going to do this side. Reasonable amount of glue. Not a lot of glue, but enough. And here, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to line it up, and it's 
tiny bit off. That's all right. I'm t I honestly, every single one of these that I've made came out a tiny bit different. So don't worry about it. If it's a tiny bit crooked, don't worry about it. If you get it perfect the first time, bonus. I'm also going to glue this one. Uh, sorry if I'm a little off center on the camera. And again, as always, I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's my favorite. Especially for wood and paper because it tacks and dries very quickly. Try to make it as close to a square as possible. And I'm going to give that about 24 hours to dry. I'm just going to measure just to double check. It should be about 75 across and it is roughly 75 across and even being crooked a little bit crooked here it should be 75 across yes 75 by 75 so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some fake wood as you can see we are dry and painted now I gave this just one layer of white uh, and you're gonna find during this project that you can pretty much stop at any point and have yourself a nice piece to work with or do something else with. You don't have to follow this exactly. You can do whatever you like uh, with a couple pieces of fake wood and maybe paint those white. Um, it's going to look just lovely. Now uh, I went ahead and just real quickly obviously I painted it white. I only gave it just like a white wash just to just in case because you know, as you know, we're going to be using the yarn uh, just in case any of the yarn has wood peeking through. I didn't want to see wood. I wanted to see white. If you paint, because this is optional, double check your ledges here and then flip it over. And double check your ledges here. And you don't want to paint the whole bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take as much yarn as I feel like I can comfortably handle and I'm going to use my scissors snip it off and then I'm going to now I'm lucky to have a yarn needle but if you don't have a yarn needle you could just use your fingers it's going to take you longer um, if you're having trouble getting your fingers in between the bars get a paper clip Use the paper clip, just tie it off on there. And your paper, be, paper clip be good to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other end, I'm going to pick any corner, and I'm going to just tie a knot. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it should be tight. I'm going to double knot it. Just to be safe. Don't worry about your tail, that's going to get buried. And then you would go ahead, go over. And that's a little bit long. That's fine. And up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate all the way around until I run out of yarn and then I'll show you how to start your next yarn and just for my convenience I'm also going to use the yarn needle. Now I've gone around twice and I wanted to just show you uh, what we're going for here. As you can see it's alternating and this is the reason why we wanted odd numbers of bars. If they were even, it would just be the same and a bar, one bar would be sticking out, one bar would be sticking in. You're also going to want to then start pushing your threads down 
This is called tamping, and if you push them down, you'll start to see a really pretty pattern forming. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this piece of thread, and then I'll come back and show you how to extend the thread without tying a bunch of knots. Now I'm about, uh, I have 10 rows showing, and I'm actually 20 rounds in. And I want to show you now, before I finish, uh, first, how did I get through here so quickly? Uh, super easy, just drop, pull. And then I like to push down. But don't push down too tight, because you may end up accidentally splitting one of your... You shouldn't. If you use enough glue, it shouldn't split on you. But I have in the past pulled way too tightly and accidentally split the wood. And I had to figure out a whole way to reinforce it. And it's just a little bit of a headache. So I don't recommend you do it. You shouldn't be pulling too tightly. And it seems tedious at first, but it really does go by pretty quickly. And this is a lightweight yarn. So if you picked something thicker, it's obviously going to go by more quickly. And if you decided to use embroidery floss, I admit that does take some time. Uh, it's very thin, so you're going to need a lot more rounds to cover all of your wood. Okay, so oh, it's looking very, very nice. So let's say you're almost out of thread, and I, I tied this on here. I'm just going to quickly cut it off so you're not waiting. I want to show you how to add thread to your strand. What you're going to do is take... You could change colors here. You could do this as many or as few times as you want. It's a, just a matter of how much thread you want to deal with at one go. And this is, see, this is loose. And I'm just going to tie a basic knot here. Tighten it so it slides. Take the slidey piece and your regular thread, your other thread, and tie that as well. Then pull. And they're going to come together and form what's called a magic knot. That knot is not going to go anywhere. You can even, and you should trim as closely as possible. Oops. That is not, that is going to hold. Also, um, you can see, they you barely can see, they kind of blend, and later I might poke those in and see if I can hide them a tiny bit. For the second one, I decided to use green, and I'm going to use your standard weight, uh, worsted weight, yarn. As you can see, I went ahead and I redid some fake stain like I did on the basic box, because I love it so much. And I also picked up some metallic gold which I did just the top edge with uh, just because I want to test it out. I just bought it. I've never used the metallics before. It was only $1.77 and uh, it looks like with one coat that is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, what I'm going to do here uh, because I have some of these these corners that are way too narrow is I'm just going to include that corner as one bar. See, I went ahead and I just did all four corners because it's easier to remember if I just do all four. See, I got these two, which will get picked up in the next round. Uh, these two are together. And these two are together. As you can see, I'm nearly finished with the green. And I quickly wanted to point out a couple things before I finish this off. When you are stitching and you get close to the top, it does get tight and um, sometimes it's a little difficult to tamp down. You can tamp it down from the inside 
and uh, you don't want to do it too tightly. Again, I want to clarify what I mean here. If you push it down too tightly, you risk splitting. And I don't mean that the wood itself will split, but the glue may split from the wood if you did not use enough of it. I'm fairly confident that I used plenty here, so um, it's nothing to worry about if you used lots of glue. I uh, did try to measure a bit while I was doing this, and again, I came up with about 25 feet total, but of course, your results are going to vary based on the spacing of your bars, how many bars you decided to use, the size of your thread, etc., etc., etc. So that would just be a guideline rather than an exact measurement. Uh, we're going to have that same issue with the lid, but we'll, we'll talk more about that when I get there. Uh, meanwhile, I am going to try to keep going around as long as I can fit my needle in there and get as close as possible to the top. I uh, also really quickly want to clarify why I let things set for 24 hours before I mess with them. If you're just waiting for glue to dry, it's pretty good to go after two hours. So when I say I'm waiting for glue to dry, I'm really not waiting for glue to dry. What I'm waiting for it to do is cure. Most glues, most of your white PVC glues will cure in 24 hours. If it's a very humid day, if you have lots of rain, we've had tons of rain lately, then you really want to make sure that you wait that 24 hours before you start handling, before you start stitching. If, uh, if it's nice and dry outside, uh, you might even be able to do it after about eight hours and have no fear whatsoever. But I like to be on the safe side, and since I usually have multiple projects going at one time, it is, uh, you know, no skin off my nose to just go ahead and let that wood cure for about 24 hours. As you can see, I'm getting really, really tight at this point. And I'm going to try to make it back around to this corner so that all this wood peeking through is gone. And then I will hopefully be ready for my next step. I hope you can see the color here. It is so pretty. So uh, I finished the green and unfortunately I lost part of the video somehow. So just so you know how I finished this, after I went around and I ended up in this corner, what I did was I just dropped my needle all the way down to the bottom and tied myself a small knot just on the bottom thread just to hold it into place. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere, especially after we get our interior put on there. Now, uh, the interior is a little more complicated, so uh, bear with me here. I've started on the blue one, and I chose some fabric. These are some scraps, and these are just something I had in my drawer. They were an old pair of pajama bottoms that I trimmed and I trimmed four of them and mainly I was concerned with uh, the width and the width is just about as wide as the box itself and it doesn't have to be exact you'll find there's always room for adjustments and improvements in this project you're gonna need six more popsicle sticks trimmed and what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure your inside from stick to stick and your measurements are going to vary and this is based on where you put these sticks because if these are flush and see I have little tiny edges where I'm not a hundred percent flush if you did all the measuring and you got perfectly flush then yay uh, but still you're gonna wanna measure your inside and my inside is coming up approximately 65 millimeters approximately 65 millimeters and it should be seen that way so what I've done 
is I trimmed my popsicle sticks one millimeter smaller, and these are roughly 64 millimeters. So when I put them in there, I'm going to have just a little bit of a margin on either side, and that's going to allow for any shifting that I need to do. And I'm going to need four for the bottom, and your bottom is not going to be a problem. Your bottom is super easy because you should have one stick worth of space at the bottom. And the top is going to be a tiny bit more difficult. And you're going to want to take your two straightest of the six, like this one, like these two. These two are pretty good. And these are going to be need to trim. You're going to need to trim these long ways to make them shorter. And the easiest way for me that I found to do this was these sticks are approximately four sticks wide. If I take four sticks and put one stick on top, it's roughly that wide. So what I did was I, I took two sticks that I'm not using and put them together. And then I line up my edge. And you're going to want to hold this tightly so that it doesn't move. Then I'm going to take my utility knife. You can use an X-Acto knife. You can use any brand that you have available. And I'm going to very carefully score right where the edge of the wood is. And you're going to want to be careful because the grain of your wood is going in the same direction that you're cutting and my knife is catching it's really hard to see it's really hard to see in person much less on the video so let me just explain that my knife is catching on the natural greens and it's pulling it this way so I now have instead of a straight line it's kind of going off on an angle so I want to do it from both sides and try to meet in the middle Also, I tape these two sticks together so that they would not come apart. And it, again, it's, it's difficult to see, but I'm just scratching to where I think I can actually move the sticks away and see that there is a line there. And I can just barely see that there is a line there. Now, unlike when you're cutting in this direction, you do not need to score both sides. Again, because your grain is going in that direction, it's going to want to break. So, what I'm going to do is start in the middle and just give it a good push. Make sure that you have something underneath your cutting area for when it pops off the end, because it will pop off the end. Always go away from your fingers. Please don't cut yourself. And I did do that a little bit slower because I wanted you to see what was happening. Now I'm just going to break it. I'm just going to break it. And there I have two sticks that are roughly the same size. Both are roughly half a popsicle stick. And both of these are going to fit nicely between the threads and my margin. Now what I'm going to do is I've already done one just to show you what we're going to end up with. It's going to be a piece that looks like this and it's going to go at the bottom and we're going to try to flush it at the bottom. We're not going to glue at this time. Do not glue yet because you may need to make adjustments and the top is going to be flush with the top. I'm going to put some glue on there. Decent amount of glue. doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a lot but it should be enough to cover. I'm just going to use my brush, which I've already used today and forgot to put in the water, so it's a little bit hard. Just so you have an, a, a reasonably smooth layer there. I'm going to put this on the corner flush. And I'm going to have all of my excess on one side. And I love Aileen's Tacky. It's already sticking really well. And I'm just going to 
glue here, glue here, and also again on the flat side. And I usually like to do one side at a time just so that I can smooth it down and avoid any bumps that come out very nicely. You do want to smooth, make sure that it's no bumps. Smooth, no bumps. I'm going to give that a quick second to dry. Uh, it's going to tack really quickly. Now, if you don't want to go through all this, you don't have to go through all this if you don't want to, but I want this to have this nice finished look on the inside where you can see the seams, the ledges. You could just cut your edge nice and straight and try to match it up and glue it to the existing toothpick here if you wanted to. You could even go outside and glue this to this, pull it down, glue it all to the inside, and you will lose your lid margin though. You'd have to come up with another lid for it, but that's okay. Uh, you could probably just put something flat on top of it. You could do um, a strap and some snaps, or if you actually have a hinge available, you could put a hinge on it. That's not what I'm going for here. So what I'm going for here is that nice margin. And we could we could do it this way, but I don't want to do it this way. I want to be able to see those sharp lines. It's just going to make it look a little more professional and a little bit more finished. And again, I'm not gluing this piece down yet because I may need to make some minor adjustments. So I got this down and um, I can still see some wood, so I need to go one more layer one more fold and this time I'm going to put the glue right on the fabric and I'm not shy with the glue again because I want it to stick forever if I can I'm going to get some on the edges maybe some on the excess fabric I'm going to fold that over smooth 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 if need be and there's my little ledge for the bottom now if I was to go and stick that in there it should fit fairly nicely with a minor overlap and that overlap is going to help hide our little angles that we created when we were stitching now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off about most of this I'm going to leave roughly half an inch and then I'm just going to cut straight across my line there. If you don't have line then you might want to pull it out first then trim but because I'm pulling it out anyway and I'm going to take my little stick and I'm going to get some glue. Be roughly even with this one down that first stick and try to have it straight if you can. If you have any excess go ahead and glue that over. As you can see I have a little bit of an excess. Now I know for sure that I need this to wrap at least one time so I'm going to go ahead and glue. And fold smooth And it's not perfect. It's a tiny bit crooked, but it's going to be fine. And then this one's going to go in again, flush with the bottom. Don't glue it yet. And we're going to see now. We're going to see that we need some more folds. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to actually fold this down. One. Two, and two should bring us right to our margin. And what I'm going to do to keep it straight is just stretch it as I go. 
And of course, it is a tiny bit crooked, but that's fine. You know me, I love crooked. Crooked just means I made it by hand. Again, I'm going to stick it in there and double check. And it's, it's not perfect, but it is meeting the margin as it should. And my two corners are not showing my angles anymore. And because of the fabric that I picked, I could put pretty much anything in this box and it's not going to snag. It's not going to get caught on your little fabric hairs, which is uh, my main concern with hiding those. Now once you have your four done, the first issue you're probably going to run into is that your corners are too tight. As I, I always work from the bottom up when I'm checking length this way. And this one is a little tiny bit tight when I get more in. So what I want to do is I'm going to trim that down, not all the way, um, only one side should be flush with the wood. The other side you're wanna, gonna want to have a little bit of an overlap. And if you need to, you can cut off more fabric. If you want to have both edges flush, you can have both edges flush. But I like to have this little bit of overlap. And all of my margins are reasonable. This is all gonna fit. And we're gonna start gluing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top now because the top margin is always more important than the bottom. Now this is my top stick, the small one, and that is going to be my important stick. I'm going to glue the back of it. I got a good amount of glue in there and of course one edge is flush and that's the edge I'm going to focus on. I'm just going to put it in there and press it and squeeze it and I'm going to squeeze it as far left as possible and to the bar. That is pretty good. Now what I want to do, I'm going to flip this up right on my yarn. And you can see I'm not playing around. Put lots in there. I'm going to just spread it around and I'm also going to put glue on my wood area and if I use too much which is unlikely I can just spread it onto the fabric itself just to get rid of it now I'm going to smooth that down and it should come to rest just under where you stitched and be somewhat flush with the bottom. Now I'm going to double check my edge. This one should be flush all the way to the wood. And if it's a little off, just push it down. Make sure that it's flush with the bottom. If there's any gaps, not important on the bottom. It's only important on the top. And it's beautiful. It looks beautiful. I'm about to put my last one on and I did have a few issues with my wood size. Uh, by the time I got around here, uh, my corners were too, too, too tight. So I did go back and I cut off more um, bits of fabric and I also trimmed this particular piece of wood down and made it so that it would fit better and I'm about to put the last one in and I want to make sure again that I get glue on as much yarn as possible it doesn't have to be um, a ton of yarn but I also want to make sure that I get the existing fabric for where the last fabric is going to touch and just dab the excess into the yarn which is going to again help all of it maintain integrity and while um, and then I'm going to put uh, more glue here 
And remember, you want to start at the top and work your way down when you're actually doing the actual gluing because your top margin is way more important than your bottom margin. Your bottom margin is mainly for show and not for strength. I'm just going to smooth that down. And I am going to have to finagle this to get it to come up in between these two bars. Right, once you've glued it all down, double check your top very quickly. Make sure before anything dries, if it needs to be pushed down or adjusted in any way, that you do that. But you should be doing that as you go, just to be sure, because if it's crooked and you're using the Aliens Tacky, it's going to be really hard to pull it off and readjust it. And then on the bottom, it doesn't really matter. If it's not flush, don't worry about it. If it's over, push it down. It should have give and should give into the yarn and not be an issue. But there you have it, and this is what your inside should be looking like. I'm going to go do the green one, and then I'll come back and show you what I picked out for the green interior. So here's what I picked out for the green, and uh, um, the, uh, the blue now... You remember we had some issues, of course you remember, for you it was two seconds ago. Uh, but we had some issues in the corners, which um, in hindsight was mainly due to the thickness of my fabric. Uh, so I, with the green one, I decided to use a thinner fabric and came up with a whole host of other issues. It was a, a scarf that someone had given me a long time ago. And um, I just thought it would look really nice in here. And yes, it absolutely does. But uh, it was a little bit of a headache to put it on. It did not want to adhere to the glue. This was the first one I put down, though. And it seems to have a nice bond once it does dry. But it didn't lay on the yarn as well as the the blue did and I imagine that's because this being a hundred percent cotton in combination with the thinner thread and um, also this was a little more stretchy so when I came up short on my folds I could stretch it and force it to fit where this was not stretchy at all and uh, here I came up short a little bit short here uh, it's not super noticeable, but I, I can see that it's a little bit short, and um, most of them I decided to go long because long seemed like the better plan, so there's some puffy spots. Still, overall effect, very, very lovely. Now, if you have not already, you should be having cut your base and um, another for your top so they should both be if if you measure if you measured and um, you're following along with what I've done you should have 75 and 75 millimeter square pieces uh, for this one obviously I went with white and this is only one layer of paint I will probably go back and do another layer because you can see some cardboard trying to peek through and I did my edges also. Remember, you want to do your edges first. That way you can blend them into this layer of paint. When you don't do your edges first, if you do them second, you end up with this. If you can see, there's a tiny bit of overlap. I'm not going to worry about that because it blends and you can't really see it. But I did do all of the brown first before I decided to put some gold on there. So I have that little bit of overlap. Also, uh, I did decide that I love the green that I picked up it's called uh, mountain green but it didn't quite match with my yarn green and uh, it just it looked really bright against that so I decided to go back to the chocolate brown the melted chocolate and it really does look like melted chocolate and I had to put two layers on this to cover the green and of course to bring it all together I did do my edge and you can see there's no gold overlapping onto the brown because I did my edge first and the brown easily covered the gold and then what I did was I measured out I took my box and I measured 
the inside for the inner portion of my lid. And on this one I'm getting 69 millimeters and I measured all the way around just to make sure and uh, some came up 70 but I'm going to go with the smaller measurement which is 69 and this one was all about 70 so I trimmed up a piece of cardboard stuck it in there to make sure it would fit and it does it is a tiny bit crooked can't, can't cut a straight line to save my life and there you can see they both fit really nicely and uh, um, I did stop at three layers with this one because you could see it was starting to become flush and I would rather it be a little under than a little bit over so this one was 70 millimeters and this one was 69 millimeters approximately all the way around and they will help keep my lid on once I glue what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue and when I glue the top what I'm gonna try to do is just center it as perfectly as I can and then I will glue that down and then I will continue and finish my painting and then that's gonna be my lid. Oh that really does look like chocolate. I want to take a bite. Okay so uh, that's what I'm gonna do with that and then I'm going to uh, for the bottom what I'm gonna do let me just show you set that aside because it's easier to see the white one on the camera this would be my bottom bottom and I'm gonna flip that over and as you can see there are a little tiny bit of cardboard peeking through so what I'm gonna try to do is increase my white margin here just slightly but what I also want to do and I've already pre-cut them out is cut some squares to match the inside what I'm gonna do is also try to center that a little bit there as much as possible and I'm just gonna glue that right to the cardboard so that when I put this on it all comes together and it has a beautiful beautiful bottom now um, I did notice and I want to point out that uh, if you poke on your corners there may be a tiny bit of rocking where you're uneven and if it's just a tiny bit that's fine but this one when I checked it to make sure it was going to fit flat it had a lot of rocking so what I did was I took my emery board and basically just sanded down all of my edges and uh, luckily the toothpicks were the issue and I I think I recall saying one of them had slipped during the drying process and uh, it was really sticking out I believe it was this one because that's the flattest one now and uh, luckily the it just it just sanded off beautifully and I didn't have any further issues and now it sits without rocking so that's what I'm going to go do now I'm going to go put down my fabric here and uh, how I got the size of the fabric was I just measured and I included I did not include the stick, but I did include all of the fabric covered areas to get my square, and my square should cover all of the fabric areas so that when I center it down, it will be nearly exact. So I got my lid portions glued down, and uh, just like uh, making the wood itself, I just put a very thin layer on this piece. And then I tried to uh, center it as much as possible. And you can see when I put it on there, it's going to be nice. And um, even though there's little bits of gaps, when I paint in there, I'm going to paint white. And you won't be able to see those as much. Uh, also with the green, same thing. Uh, when I get in there and I paint, it's going to look its going to look absolutely, I love this. It's so pretty. Look at this. And the bottom is also going to match with a little bit of gold. I love the tiny bit of gold. And um, okay, so so I also did my bottoms and this one was like super easy. I had no problems with this whatsoever. And you can see it's gonna match up and it's gonna be perfect.
We're going to um, just double check our corners. You can see this corner is coming up. My edges here are kind of coming up. And what I want to do is glue those down. So I'm just going to, um, I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of glue right on my brush here. Because I won't need a lot to get it to stick. So I'm just going to lift that up. So I'm just going to lift that up and just tap some glue where it is, smooth it. I just want to show you uh, what to do with those edges. And then after this dries, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll clip off all these little scragglers. And everything is painted and ready to go and there really is nothing left to do to this. Everything beyond this point is completely optional. Um, what I'm going to do now, my lids are done, these are just done. I can do more if I wanted to. I could add some more decoration to the top. You can see that the inside now, the little gaps are almost impossible to see with the, the white paint on there. And they look just lovely. They really, ju it just looks so lovely and it doesn't do it justice on the camera. Um, so uh, what I want to do now is attach my bases and of course this is probably the easiest part of the entire project. If it's not perfectly flat, possibly do a tiny bit of sanding, but what I'm going to do is just use a lot of glue. And I will first smooth onto the wood as well as a little bit onto the fabric. Make sure I get my edges. And this should be a nice thick, thick, thick layer. And I'm going to just do a little bit of tapping to get it into the fabric. And some of these fabric areas are not actually going to touch the bottom. Because they did not quite meet when I glued it down. But for whatever does touch, I want it to stick, 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 stick. And if I wanted my bottom to be a little thicker, I could would just put down another square but I'm happy with the one, so I'm just going to do the one. And of course, you just want to line this up. Make it even all the way around. You want it as centered as possible. And I do see a little bit of gaps, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put a book on this so that it will adhere as much as possible can see it looks it looks pretty it doesn't even look like it needs the books it looks beautiful I'm very happy with the way that came out same with the brown one now if you remember the brown one was a little bit crooked on the bottom and I did do some sanding to it so um, I actually have more gaps in the bottom of this one than I do on this one. Hopefully putting the books on there will take care of a lot of those gaps. And then if I really wanted to later I could go back and put something around there to hide it and I may do that because I do have these crooked areas which become super obvious. Still if I did nothing else to this it really does look absolutely lovely. So these are the boxes you saw at the beginning in the preview picture and what I've done is I just put some ribbon around the wood here and across the top just to give it some design. This was not my original intention. My original intention was to do more blue on the outside but the entire time that I was making this box I kept thinking wouldn't this make just an excellent reveal box assuming you had something to reveal and uh, so I stuck with the yellow and and uh, if I had thought that I was going to do this I may have taken the time while making my lid to fold my ribbon over and hide the seam underneath 
this part of the wood, but I didn't think that far ahead. So what I just did was I folded it down and glued it to the edge itself, and then I went around the entire thing with some light yellow embroidery floss just to hide those margins. But this is super lovely. I can't wait to give it to somebody. This is definitely at least one person crossed off my Christmas list. And then this one is not done. This one has to be touched up some more, but you, I did leave it this way for the end of the video on purpose because I want you to see some mistakes that I made that I'm going to have to add to. And whenever you make a mistake, the best thing to do is to add more stuff. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is put some wood over top of where I painted the gold. And uh, if you looked at my other video uh, on what to do with your um, leftover pieces, you know I have this mosaic tile which I'm really leaning towards. I really like that and I like the way the gold brings it out. So if I was to paint that green, if I could get close to this color green, it would really, really bring it out. Or I could just paint it brown and put some more gold underneath and I love the way the gold is peeking through. Also, before I added all of these little details, I did spray this with a clear uh, matte spray and it's not supposed to be shiny but you can see that it's shiny and I assume that I either over sprayed or uh, something got on it while it was outside drying and unfortunately I had that situation with both sides where it's a little bit blotchy so I might just go ahead and spray it again and or go over it with a layer of glue just to make it more flat. I uh, also made this which I didn't show in the things to do with your scraps but it is just basically half a popsicle stick end and a toothpick and this may make a good handle to lift the lid off. The lid is not that heavy so this little tiny thing should do wonders. Now if you like my boxes please hit like I would appreciate it and if you know anyone who would like to make these boxes, please feel free to share. That's what I'm here for. And um, if you want to follow along and do more boxes with me, I am doing two more of these boxes as we speak. And they are going to be completely different. I've pre-made the cages, so I won't need to go over all of those details. I'll just be showing you what I came up with for the next two boxes in the next video. So if you want to see that, hit subscribe. And thank you so much for doing this project with me. I had a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.